Hello everyone and welcome back to Etalan. For today's video, I'll be working on a doll from suggestions given through the community on Instagram. I've had a lot of recommendations to create a spiritual yokai and supernatural doll whilst also having suggestions to create a Ghibli doll. So what better way to combine both than making a Spirited Away doll? Before we start, make sure to hit the subscribe button as I'd really appreciate it. With all that being said, let's jump into the video. For this repaint, I'll be using a Spectre doll from the Haunted series to create one of the movie's most iconic characters, which is No-Face. This doll isn't like normal Spectra dolls as she doesn't have her signature transparent appendages, instead having an iridescent plastic which is just ghostly and beautiful and perfect for a yokai like no face. To start off this repaint, I'll be removing all hair and factory paint, removing the head with hot water to soften the vinyl as to not break the neck peg, removing the hair with pliers and face with a 100% acetone and a cotton swab. Once that's done, I give her a good spray of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish and use our Black Dural Faber-Castell watercolours to get started with the face up. While researching the doll, I looked into a lot of the themes and characteristics from the movie as it's focused around the spirit world through the lens of the Shinto religion and focusing a lot on Japanese mythology. So it took a lot of inspiration from traditional Japanese paintings of yokai. The character of No Face is basically just a blank black sheet with a No Sanjiro mask. I noticed that Miyazaki based the design of No Face on a Noperabo specific yokai. I think that's how you say it. The Noperabo is a faceless yokai that takes the form of a human. While it's low-key terrifying, um, I wanted her to be more sweet and curious as opposed to terrifying. This more references No Face's character in the latter half of the movie. In developing the face, I wanted to go with very sweet eyes, with shallow eye creases and large eye bags, later creating a very dimensional iris design as well. For the iris design, I started filling in the base with a blue pencil, but she won't have blue eyes later on, she'll actually have purple eyes to match the original design of the mask. I didn't actually realise until I was filming that I didn't actually own a purple pencil that works, um, so it's not good. <laughs> so I have to use paint later on in finishing up the eyes. Using soft pastels, I developed the shadows of the face, focusing on the inner and outer corners of the eyes at the moment. Once that's done, I will spray her with a coat of Mr. Super Clear and we'll go on to layer two. With layer two dried, I start with the brows. When creating the brows, I'm going to create some just small basic straight brows with hairs throughout. Nothing too extravagant as I don't want it to be the focus point of the face. I want it to all be in balance later on. Once that's done, I go over the blushing again, now darkening the shadows and starting to contour the face. Once it's been contoured, I do the topmost coat of blushing, which will be with purples and iridescence, which are from Colourpop eyeshadows. 
the eyeshadows I'm using are matte, iridescent light and iridescent dark purples and doing that all around the face. The undercoat of shadowing lets her face be framed and shadowed to look realistic, whereas the purple overcoat will bring an ethereal and spiritual look to her skin. At the end of the day, while she will look human, I want her to be different. I want her to have purple blushing and the shimmering so that she just has that difference that isn't completely human. Onto the irises, I'm going to give her purple eyes that match her mask, which will be made later on. I want there to be around three layers of design so when you look into it there's dimension and you're just drawn into the, the depth of it. Doing this I use my army painted brush and some Vallejo white paint to start drawing the first layers of patterns. Once that's dry I dab some dark purple eyeshadow into the whites, changing the colour, then repeating the process over and over to build up beautiful dimension into the eyes. I wanted to incorporate her name into her face up, um, kind of because Yubaba, the antagonist in the movie, steals names in order to own the person. So I like the idea of her writing her name on her face as a reminder to what it is. Um, kind of like the scene from the movie, Your Name. But instead of writing no face, uh, I wanted to go with the Japanese word, which is kyonashi meaning faceless in English, and I decided to write that in hiragana along her cheek. For her body, I blushed it with only the purples and the iridescent light purple. While this model is a translucent colour, I wanted to emphasise through shimmering so it picks up beautifully when you photograph her. For hair, I'll be using the acrylic yarn technique, which I learned from a Mazekito video, links to their channel will be below. Basically, getting a 100% acrylic yarn and brushing it out with a dog brush, then straightening those fibres and then it starts looking hair-like. Laying the fibres down and then creating the banding for the wefts with PVA glue. Once that's done, you are able to apply it to the head. For the hairstyle, I decided to go with a Hime princess cut, with the long hair and a ponytail. To start with the styling, I need to first build the structure of the fringe first, but not going past the line that I've just drawn. Once that's done, I get the wefts that will be a part of the ponytail. I'll place them front facing along the edges of the hairline, kind of like a middle ages monk. Building the layer of thickness by gluing wefts on top of those as well, but in the opposite direction.
Once that's done, I will flip the hair and then brush it with a toothbrush to have it styled into a ponytail. Sectioning the front fringe out, I brush it and start with the styling. You can't tell me that that's not me at 3am. <laughs> With a scalpel, I'm going to lightly razor the hair over and over again, just to thin it. Um, I don't want the fringe to look too thick, because your hair isn't naturally thick at the ends. It will taper in terms of thickness. So I wanted to make sure that this is incorporated in the doll. While it might look like I'm scraping the hair, it's just lightly brushing. It's not going to cause any damage to the doll or me. It's just looking a little abrasive just because it's sped up. Onto her mask, I use Vallejo and Citadel paint mixtures and start painting up just a basic polymer clay slab that I made off camera. Once that's dry, I will just start making a basic template and paint it in with those mixtures to create the no face mask. Finishing off, I add a nice little ribbon and have a pin stuck in it so I can stick it into her head and keep it in place. I also created some miniaturized shide in the Yoshida style, which will be added to her mask as adornings. So onto clothes, I didn't realise until after that the whole filming of the creation was not in frame, which is super fun and I love that. So I guess onto her clothes, I used a mixture of black and wavy black fabric in reference to the wibbly wobbly design of No Face when you get really up close to them. I created just a basic black kimono top with waved patterns and added some blanket stitching similar to that that you'll see on Shrine Maidens. With a basic black panel design skirt with the openings for the legs in reference to how sometimes you can see No Face's legs throughout the movie.
couple shoes, I stole some basic sandals from one of my Draculaura dolls and painted them in just a basic white Vallejo paint. Later creating some socks as well, just so it matches the shoes. With the Vallejo gloss varnish, I add the final touches to her face up, which is glossing the eyes and the lips. Once that's dry, I'm able to assemble her and she's ready for her photos. Thank you so much for watching, let me know what you think of her in the comments below and if you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see me make in the future. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and if you'd like to see more of this doll or any of my other dolls, make sure to check out my Instagram at Edlan.